Celebrating 15 years of podcasting, here's a memorable moment from the Adam Carolla Show's Ace Awards archives. I love Saturday Night Live. I've always loved Saturday Night Live, except for when DJ Khaled performed. But I've... <laughs> well, I've two, I'm so, oh, right. Uh, uh, yeah. uh, uh, but another I, one. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that, that guy, yeah. We That's how he orders food. Another yeah, one. Yeah. <laughs> Can I get you a coffee? Another one. You like some ranch with those fries? <laughs> another one. <laughs> okay. Normally, we don't put the chili and the ranch on top of the fries. No, but, another one. <laughs> okay. Would you like a steak cut fry, a curly fry, or just a traditional just fry? Just another one. Oh, okay. Would you like us to dump the ranch into your mouth and then dip, just push the fries Let into your mouth? Let me think about it. Another one. Okay. <laughs> Now, for some new memorable moments, let's get back to the Adam Carolla Show. That was Dawson. Chris Catan. That's yeah. Chris Catan. That's which right. Is, which is interesting to bring up today, because guess who we have not seen in a long time? DJ Khaled? Yeah. Yeah, I... You do okay. First off, you know P Diddy conspiracy. That's, I don't. I, I don't know, but you do have to. I, all I will say is when people who are haunting your consciousness, mm-hmm. like haunting your world, mm-hmm. like he lives rent free in my head, mm-hmm. haunting me. When you realize you just sort of wake up and you're like, eh, it's been a minute since I've seen him trying to hit a fucking golf shot or play Ziggy Marley's guitar or something. And you know, what, what happened to him? It's not like he has a uh, specific reason not to do the dumb things he does, like play guitar horribly or anything, because he's a narcissist and wants his videos out there. Where is he? Yes, and it's yeah. not like there's ever a season for Did DJ see, yeah, yeah, Khaled. Right. Like, you could go, well, what happened right. to, to Shoei Otani? And you go, well, it's the off season. Right. He's fucking relaxing somewhere. He's right. not doing stuff right now. Why haven't now, I but, heard from Mariah Carey? We'll wait till Thanksgiving. Right. And, but he yeah. shits out a video you don't care about every 10 every, minutes. Exactly. So where is that guy? I did do just a cursory at a glance, internet search. I asked Google the question, is DJ Khaled friends with Diddy? Mm-hmm. And it comes back as a resounding yes. Uh-huh. They they were close, apparently, which brings us into our first news story. A lawyer for Jay-Z said a legal ultimatum to talk show host Piers Morgan was necessary and prompted him to take the unusual step of editing an interview with a guest who claimed that the hip-hop mogul and his wife, Beyonce, are engaged in potentially criminal behavior in line with the allegations against Sean Diddy Combs. Well... You know, there's some weird thing where they do a lot of this guy grew up on the streets and he was a hustler and he was a drug dealer and he was a pimp. And we all go, oh, isn't that wonderful? Mr. Snoop Dogg was a pimp. <laughs> hey, Mr. <laughs> Snoop Dogg, how is my pimp hand? Is it strong? Oh. Herb, come here, Mr. Pimp, uh, Snoop Dogg said I have a, a good pimp hand. And they, but they don't realize what is pimping? <laughs> You know what I mean? Like they treat it like, oh, it's so funny. Herb, uh, he has cute. a Cadillac yeah. that has lowered suspension on it and gold anodized rims, and he wears a raccoon coat even during the summertime. He is a pimp. He has a funny velvet hat. It's like, yeah, you're stringing out runaway chicks on yeah. drugs, yeah. and and fucking doing horrible things to people, right? right. Like if you're a pimp or you're pimp hand, you're right. drugging, you're dealing on the streets. And then we laugh like, oh, yeah. he had to settle a few guys' then, hash. Uh, Once in a while, the guy wouldn't pay him. And he, yeah. he had to show him. He showed him good. It's like, uh, Don King, look this shit up, Byron. Don King... In St. Louis, in 1961, 57, I don't know, in St. Louis, stomped a man to death. Right. He owed him money. Mm -hmm. So he stomped him Mm -hmm. until he died. And maybe he got his $40 back. I don't know. But the point is, is you know the guy with the picked out hair, and he's got the American flags, and he's yelling only in America. Okay, but that's not who that guy is. That guy is somebody else. Mm -hmm. He started somewhere. Mm -hmm. He started stomping somebody to death Mm -hmm. in St. Louis. So the pimp hand and this guy dealt, he turned the ladies out and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, there's there's something there. 
And and now it's all about Malibu, and it's all about uh, hanging out with rich guys on yachts, which is fine, but it doesn't mean that thing isn't there. Mm-hmm. Uh, 1966, Don King stomped a man to death. Don King was convicted of voluntary manslaughter in 1967 for stomping to death an employee who owed him, well, he owed him $600. Well, I there mean, you go. Geez. And by the way, Sick that Dawson, that'd be like you owing me twenty two hundred dollars today. So yeah, obviously info, you, yeah. I'd be right to stomping you in the parking lot. Seems logical. You. Yeah, he owed him six hundred. Mm-hmm. He stomped him to death. He was an employee. By the way, what's the American employee, dream though? He can do that. What's employee mean to Don King in nineteen sixty six? That is a weird thing. Uh, he served three years and records. eleven months in prison for the crime. Well, I don't know if him, that guy paid FICA. He owed him six hundred dollars. <laughs> All right. Well, Pierce Morgan on Tuesday apologized uh, on his uh, daily YouTube show called Uncensored for comments made last week by singer-songwriter Jaguar Wright, whom Morgan described as a Combs whistleblower, Wright, who has hundreds of thousands of followers on Instagram and TikTok, has used her experience in the, the music Beebs, industry. I thought the Beebs blew his whistle a couple times, too. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's a whistleblower, right? There. <laughs> uh, <laughs> used her experience in the music industry to lodge claims against Combs and Jay-Z, whose real name is Sean Carter. Combs was arrested last month, as we know. Uh, in her interview, he she called Jay-Z and Combs monsters, Mm-hmm. Morgan asked her why she believes Jay Z had been a no, had been has been notable for his silence about the charges, and she accused Jay Z uh, of forcing everyone involved to carry water while he sneaks away without a response. Well, um, let's let's break down the game film here, Dawson. Mm-hmm. You're a reasonable man. In professions where it's 100% merit based mm-hmm. then there is no well i got to go suck the owner's dick so right. i can get a job playing cornerback for the buffalo bills because that's not how it works right, right? It just doesn't work that way um, and in carpentry and skill based things it doesn't work that way and interestingly enough there's a segment of sort of show business or entertainment where it doesn't really work this way. Sure. Those people are undeniable. No, it's stand up. Mm -hmm. It doesn't really work because who's, who can fake an hour special? Now there's some guys where you go, I don't think that's Sebastian Manikowski. I don't think that guy's that funny, whatever, but you, he has to go up and do an hour and somebody's got to like him. That audience is laughing. You, You know what I mean? Like it has to work. Records and you can't fake your way through being John Hired or Shooter Jennings or no. any of the, you, you can't fight you cannot fake your way through being a singer songwriter. But rap, who the fuck knows, right? Now there's a couple of guys that are really super skilled at it, and then there's everyone else, you know. And when it comes, and that's the rap version. Then there's the Weinstein version of it. Like you don't think I could have been in any one of these comedy movies and been right. fine being in it? Like right. any anyone I went to the Groundlings with or the Acme with could have easily been of this. Now I don't know if they're going to be Will Ferrell, but they they could have a career. They could be in movies. Any hot chick pretty much can play the part of the fill in the black. Pretty much. So it's not going to happen in the NBA. You don't hear any stories about this guy. Well, he didn't start as power yeah. forward for the Knicks until you know he blew it does the happen, owner. Though? It happens on the Olympics basketball team for Paraguay or something like that, where someone rich will come in and buy their way onto an Olympic team. Yeah, but then that but not team's in the not going to be good, right? And we'll know who that guy is. There's there's no none of that in sports, or at least in this country, right. and there isn't any of it in stand up. There's trends, but there's not any any of that, uh, and it doesn't really exist in you know airline pilots and and other things like that. But it does exist in acting, and it does in exist in music that kind of music it's not going to be your you're not going to be the jayhawks and go out there and fake a jayhawk set you can't replicate that but you could go up there and point at the ceiling and yell we the best 
That I think I could I could pull off. Right. So I'm not sure. I'll try it when I get home. But I'm going to try it pointing up and yelling, we the best. Yeah. And then there's also a move where I hold the microphone out and you mm-hmm. guys do all the things. So that mm-hmm. can be done. So then that'll give way to Harvey Weinstein and that'll give way to P. Diddy. Right. Because we don't need P. Diddy, P. Diddy in the NFL. That guy ran a 4 40 in his combines. He took the 225 bench press and did 35 reps. That guy's starting in the NFL. Right. As opposed to the fat, doughy son of the owner who isn't starting. But we can pull it off. And then you get gatekeepers. And once you get gatekeepers, you get casting couches. And you get gatekeepers who never were the all-pro Never even really good enough to get it's in the league, but job. somehow they got their there. And now they're the, the gatekeepers gate. because they don't want anybody better than them showing them up. Um, I don't know if they don't want anybody better than them showing them up. They just make you make more money as a team owner than a than uh, a yeah, standout than a shutdown corner. Good point. You always That's make true. more as yeah. the label owner than the virtuoso guitar player. Like right. they, I don't know if what they want. What they want is this is a sport where look. Let's face it. You, you sit around. Half the SNL episodes where they have a rapper on there, yeah, ninety percent of white America just looks at that and goes, "I don't really know if that guy's good or okay. that's hard or I couldn't do that. I don't know how much is coming through a machine or how much is being. I, I I don't know if I if I could do that or couldn't do that. We don't we yeah. don't know. When you watch the NBA, you know real fast you can't do that. That's that's how that that works, and it's the same with acting. So you're always going to have the guys that are gifted at rap and always going to have the guys that are gifted at acting and then there's everybody else and that's I, I, where the gatekeeping and by the way in terms of like projects do you know how many movies and projects and comedies and whatever that don't get made that yeah. are far better than the shit that is getting Absolutely. made Absolutely and I think that the whole thing could be spread across the music industry. I don't think it's rap only because just like that how many great movies could get m- made. I know that there are hundreds of thousands of au- or thousands of no. awesome rock and roll bands yeah. but no, they decide across. we get one. Yeah, you know, it, it's a cross. I'm just nope, saying. You're getting ruined five. I'm Fuck just off. saying, Celine Dion, you can't, you know, right. that, you can't fake her She's way undeniable. to the top. Right. All right. All right. So we're going to get a couple of chances to hear from uh, Vice President Kamala Harris. Mm. Um, today, as you are listening to this, she's sitting down with uh, Chief Political Anchor Brett Baer over at Fox News. Um, it's her first time talking to Fox. It's a lot of people are saying there's some desperation and that she is going to Fox because as you will recall, uh, she completely shut down the possibility of a debate uh, with former President Trump on Fox. And now she's going to Fox to sit down with this guy for an hour that airs at 6 p.m. Eastern. Um, I'm not sure she's going to get through an hour. Um, Well, okay. (laughs) I was thinking about this. Like maybe she goes to Brett Bear, maybe she talks to Joe Rogan. And right. I was like, what is this? And what this is is I think what this is is you've been kidnapped by Hamas. You think you can get released if you just act nice and play Ooh. play it good. And at some point you realize I got to just fucking charge the guard. And you go, that guy's holding a machine gun. And you go, fuck, fuck it's our only chance. I, I, we're going to be killed in two weeks. <laughs> right. So I'm just fucking, we're just, I'm just charged. I'm Let's just go running down at him. I, something might happen. Something will break. But, and you go, well, why would you do that? Well, if I thought I was going to be released and this whole thing was going to work out, I was going to be reunited with my family, I would just sit here quietly and eat my sure. gruel. But, I'm now going to charge this guy. That's yeah. you even whispering that you might go on Joe Rogan's show is you going, I'm just I'm just charging a guy with the fucking pay that. And I, that's I, all I, that that's is all right that is. now. Just whispers that right, she but is even, going even to be Brett on Joe Bear, Rogan. Even Brett Bear. Right. And and that's suggesting something desperate because now 
you can go, well, maybe she's just being forthcoming and maybe she's being transparent. Maybe she wants to get her message out to a wider audience or something. But remember, we only got Joe Biden because he hid from all these people. We right. only got Joe he Biden. He did not charge the guard. He didn't charge the guard, and we got Joe Biden. Yeah. He, he realized, oh, no, I can stay here in this tunnel mm -hmm. for a few more weeks and come out and be reunited with my family. And he, he did. And also, he realized that he had the media working for him. And so, oh, don't worry about Tony Bobolinsky and the Hunter Biden laptop, they're going to fix all that for me. And the mm. intel agents will sign the letter and everyone will go online and, and explain that this is Russian collusion, so on and so forth. So um, that'll work. And he knew it would work. Uh, I don't think she thinks it's going to work. She, I don't think she thinks it is either. Right. And so she's charging. Now, she's going to have difficulty with She's, Brett Bear because uh, Brett Brett Bear is fair balanced and unafraid. He is not um that you know there's there's dogged there's doing your job there's dogged and then there's distracting and distressing. I uh, maybe just using a lot of alliteration, but what I'm saying is is if you go okay, what are the what are the shades? There's a clip I don't know if anyone's in the other. Oh, there they are. Um, there's a clip of Brett Bear talking to a former um, CIA guy about signing his document um, with the 51 security experts oh. that said it had all the earmarks of Russian okay. collusion, right? And okay. the guy was doing a sort of dipsy do flipperoo bullshit, you know, like. You know, that thing where it's like like when someone goes, uh, I never called you stupid. I said you can be stupid all the time. But I didn't say you were stupid. I just said you that. can be stupid. Uh -huh. I never said you were stupid. I, did I say the words you were stupid? I said you can be stupid all the time. But I never called you stupid. It's like, I don't, you're just saying what I'm saying. You fucking said it. You know, he was, he did this thing where he goes, I said it had all the earmarks of Russian collusion. I did not say it was Russian collusion. And Brett Baer was like, yeah, but you did. You know, that's what you were trying to achieve. He was like, I wasn't trying to achieve anything. And they basically did what they did, and then this guy went in circles. But what I'm saying is, is Brett Baer gave him, a, he gave him about 25% of what I gave to Gavin Newsom, which is, here is the, here would be the extremes. The extreme is when Kamala Harris or whomever Democrat goes to friendly territory and, uh, well, the most extreme is, you know, you go on Stephen Colbert or The View. Right. And they feel somewhat obligated to bring up certain subjects sometimes. And they'll say stuff like, well, in the past you said this and, and now you're saying that. Uh, so what is it now? What do you think? Here's your chance. And they go, well... Uh, I'm for, I'm no longer against fracking, but I have not abandoned any of my principles. And they go, good for you. Good for you. And by the way, uh, your boss is celebrating a birthday soon, isn't he? Right. And then they move on. That's the lightest touch. Right. Then there is a head over to CBS and have them ask you the same softball questions with no follow-up. They go, well, Tim Walls, you did say you're in Tiananmen Square during the whole the whole Chinese uprising, but turns out you were in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. And he goes, you know what? I say some screwball things sometimes, and I get my date screwed up. And they go, I do too. And you were a football coach, you're a right? Football coach, right? right? You know, there's a birthday coming up. Biden's yeah. got a birthday, and so that's the light version. Now, the hardest version. Is me and Gavin Newsom and me not letting him go for 25 minutes about right. the exact same subject. Just right. circle, circle. I'm not going to let it go. I'm not going to let it go until you say something that makes sense. Uh, Brett Bear's probably, if I'm a five and the guy, the softball interviews a, a one, uh, he's like a three and a half. Mm -hmm. He's now 
you can't do what I do because at a certain point it, it crosses into being unprofessional sure. and no one will ever come back because <laughs> they don't want to talk about to it, the though. fucking guy with Tourette's right. who will not let this shit go. Right. But at a certain point, it's a business decision and there has to be a business decision made. That I feel like that Brett Bear clip is... We have it. We're just queuing it up for you. Oh, okay. Sorry. Okay. Now, now, you'll hear... The guy, um, I don't know who the fella is. I don't even know what, this is an older clip, I think. He's talking to Officer Hunter. We'll try to figure this uh, one out. I can't see it that well from where I'm at. Now, you will hear some doggedness. And all I'm saying is, is we are now living in a world where the first answer is all bullshit. Right. And if you don't go back, you know, you go, uh, it, it, Tim Walls, you said you were in Tiananmen Square. Yeah, right. I'm a knucklehead. Right. All right, moving on. These kind of softball interviews are what created Gavin Newsom. You know how fond he is of his own flowery language and the words he likes to use and then right. and then give these answers that seem incredibly intelligent. They're, that wouldn't exist without the softball interviews, and it keeps on perpetuating right. the yes. dickhead now, politicians who right. don't answer questions. So we'll listen to him. He's talking to a CIA officer about signing the Hunter Biden thing. I want to turn to another aspect of Russia, and this deals with... Russia interference. Um, in October, days before the 2020 election, you signed on to this open letter that was published by Politico. It said, we write to say that the arrival on the U.S. political scene of emails purportedly belonging to Vice President Biden's son, Hunter, much of it related to his time serving on the board of the Ukrainian gas company Burisma, has all the classic earmarks of a Russian information operation. Right. Why did you sign on to that? Yeah, because of what it says. It has all the classic earmarks of one of these operations. You'll note elsewhere in the letter, if you read it, that it also says, we don't know if this is a Russian operation at all. That has been dramatically changed in the retelling of the story. But the letter is merely pointing out that this is the kind of thing that time after time after time, people who study Russian disinformation, yeah. intelligence officers who look at Russian tactics over the long period of time, this is the kind of thing they like to amplify to yeah. sow discord within target countries. I, now, but sometimes that target work. country is the United States. Right. Most often in the Cold War, it was Europe. But the fact is, the tactic is an old one, a tried and true right. one, and it's been successful in, in the past. Pause it. Country. Pause it. So if you're talking to Leslie Stahl or anyone from 60 Minutes, they'd go, thank you for your candor. Right. Now, I hear there's a birthday coming up. Right. But he doesn't do that. Okay. Because this guy just took the bullshit put it on a flip-flop and smeared it on thick. He, he came up with a prepared answer right. that he went and over right, with his lawyers. Right. There and we go. Brett Bear's and going let's see to if he say... Him. You have to be prepared to stop and start sometimes when we do this. On a tried and true one, and it's been successful but in, in the past. in this case, it was not true. It was not true. In fact, the New York Times found that um, these are authenticated. The Washington Post writes thousands of emails purportedly from the laptop computer of Hunter Biden are authentic communications that can be verified through cryptographic signatures from Google and other technology companies, say mm -hmm. two security experts who examine the data. New York Post, who did the story first, says, holy cow, here are these other verifications. And then in the debate, right before the election, uh, now President Biden used it. Take a listen. Oh, this is a longer clip than I was Reckless. Absolutely for. reckless. Putin but heard this. Our allies and friends heard this. Uh, this is truly... We're talking about the issue. Laptop from hell. President Trump, Nobody. we're talking about race right now, and race. I do want to stay on race. the issue of race. Mm -hmm. President Trump, you know, I have just... to respond to that. Please, because, look, That's... very quickly. There are 50 former national intelligence folks... That's another good example ...who said that what this she's we're accusing it to. me So there's a birthday coming. So let's talk about race. Plan. Let's talk about race. You mean the laptop is Because I know I can pin a bunch of shit on one half of you. That's exactly what... That's exactly going, what this is going. where he's so understanding how you characterize it, but yeah. he characterized it differently and used it in a debate just days before an election. Yeah, I'll let President Biden speak for himself. He's capable of doing that. What I'll do is say mm, that it really. has all the classic earmarks of a Russian campaign in the way it was disseminated and propagated through media. Do you regret signing on to the letter? Oh, absolutely not, because uh -huh. those words are still true. Do you think it has all the classic the earmarks? Of an election? Oh, absolutely not. No, this Even is- Even though it wasn't true. It no. had the classic earmarks, but it wasn't true. 
What is not true? That it was Russian disinformation. That's not what we said in the letter. Read the actual letter and we said we do not know if this is Russian disinformation. It has right? all the classic earmarks of a Russian information operation. Exactly. The I difference between an information campaign and a disinformation campaign and a misinformation campaign, get to and and a misinformation campaign. it's not my fault if people don't look up definitions. I know, but you're, the purpose of the letter is to have an effect. <laughs> and the nuance that you're talking about here never made it to candidate Biden because he said it plainly on a debate stage that obviously affected the dynamic, yeah. don't you think? I would absolutely love for all news media to show nuance on all these issues instead of racing to sound bites. And in this case, some news media race to sound bites. That's not helpful for the American people. And you I really wish that people- Was your letter for helpful? The people? Well, instead of quoting one sentence uh, from it, if people actually read maybe right, an entire paragraph- The point is, is he will go, he will, go he will do laps. He's Kamala's doing laps. In, this Kamala, is a real interview. Kamala's not ever been interviewed by anyone who'll do laps. Gavin Newsom was never interviewed by anyone who did laps. The people, yeah. I can tell you, the people who don't do laps, they throw out bullshit and then they start to leave. You, you and know then they I mean? go back and repeat their bullshit. Right. So they're not used to doing laps. And exactly. then what you heard with Gavin Newsom and me is he wasn't used to doing laps. So he kept saying the same semi-retarded sentence Stop. over and over again. He would never clarify it. He would never fix it. He would never clean it up. He was re yeah. It, so Kamala Harris does, is used to that as well. Absolutely. But Brett Baer will do laps. And he'll do it respectfully. Um, he will call her Madam Vice President. He's not going to try to make her feel uncomfortable. But I think, I, I think this. I uh, I don't know. I just think it's the end. Well, we'll see. It it's it feels hail Mary esque yeah. to me. I don't think they're doing this because they think she's going to go up there and share a lot of information with a lot of Americans. If they thought. Again, four years ago, they thought, we got this. Keep right. Joe in the basement. I don't want him slobbering on someone's microphone and fucking, fucking everything up. Keep him in the basement. We got it. And it worked. And it was smart. They think something else. If they thought the basement would work, they well, would do it. They are obviously, I guarantee you, they're trying to prep the shit out of the vice president so that she does not make an ass of herself on this Thing. I think that they are worried as the there is a 50-50 chance that she the, will, the problem, even without I, the preparation. I think the problem with the prep is the prep is only good for round one. It's not mm -hmm. good if you go into round seven. Right. And it, that's their but prep they, is the first answer. It's not the got, second I, answer. Yeah. Well, we'll see. Yeah, we'll see. All right, you have one more? Tony Stewart's uh, waiting in, sure. the, in the paddock. Yeah, let's switch gears so here. I there, I said paddock. I like it. I mm -hmm. like it. A 1997 crime thriller has been rated the best movie of all time, according to Rotten Tomatoes. Mm. But the guy who wrote this article doesn't like it. Don't throw it up yet, because I do want to, when I tell you the movie, you should guess what the Rotten Tomatoes scores are. 1998? 1997 crime thriller. Uh, the movie is um, L.A. Confidential. Mm -hmm. L.A. Confidential with... Um, Guy Pierce, Kevin Spacey, Russell Crowe, mm -hmm. and a viciously uh, James Elroy um, just became was a total fucking bad guy in this movie. Mm -hmm. I believe it was like chief of police or something like that. I haven't seen it in a few years, but anyway, Wait, the James guy, Elroy. Yeah, I he's he was the an author. I think he's the guy. J oh no, okay, no, you're right, you're right, you're right. Um, James, like, he must be the alter. He's the demon dog of crime fiction, they're calling him. So, But the other guy... James he was uh, in Elroy is the Babe. author, right? Yeah, I'm sorry. He is. Yeah. But the, the dude who played the guy who owned the pig, James Babe. James Cromwell. James Cromwell. There <laughs> we go. I go through this with Dr. Drew yes. on a daily basis. He yeah. brings up a subject and then... Not sure. My bad. The My official bad. particulars. They didn't put Cromwell in here, but I knew mm -hmm. that the guy's name was James. So when I saw it, I just ah. thought it, it must have been him. Uh, anyway, uh, this is This is great. The guy who wrote this must hate Rotten Tomatoes, and mm. he's the kind of guy 
that you uh, do not like. You can't hang out with this dude. Mm, don't want to have beer with him? He says, uh, if you're wondering if the new Alien movie is worth your time, you might peruse an aggregator like Rotten Tomatoes for guidance. This is entirely understandable. But if you're looking to read a list of ranking the greatest movies of all time, you should turn to an organization with the highest possible standards. You don't want all academics necessarily, but you should absolutely seek out the opinions of people who know their film history. This is not a job you leave to Rotten Tomatoes, and you won't find a firmer defense in their unfitness in this exercise than their own methodology for selecting the 300 best movies of all time. Guess what their methodology was? Uh, well, now it's uh, there's there's we have to weigh women, they have to weigh minorities, mm -hmm. they have to weigh sexual proclivities, they have a certain amount of gay directors, like a certain amount of female directors, like they do the same thing. You, you want to ruin every list or you want to mm. ruin a Rock and Roll Hall of Fame or you want to ruin the Academy Awards, then start weighing in other subject, other attributes other than just product. Right. And then you're going to end up with Joan Jett. Well, if you speak with movie critics, you might come up with um, Citizen Kane. I've been watching Citizen Kane for the last four years and I'm still only two hours into it. Wow. And it just takes, it's like, okay, I'm going to sit down and try to chug down 20 more minutes. But here's what Rotten Tomatoes did. In a tweet, they said, how did we select and rank the movies? First, every movie here is certified fresh. Then we applied our recommendation formula, which considers the movie's tomato rating, along with assistance from its audience score, illuminated and beloved sentiment from both sides. Critics certified audience approved seems pretty reasonable right mm -hmm. that's why this guy hates it he thinks citizen kane should have been number one forever or something um but let's see if you can guess you've seen la confidential right more, yeah more than once uh i can't i don't think more than once i think i've seen it three times mm -hmm. that's a solid movie i really enjoy it but yeah throw what, what do you think you want to take a guess at the audience score or the critic score both of them go critics first i'll say critics Trying to think of what the theme was. It was, old, it was set in the 40s or crooked, something? Crooked cops, uh, yeah, like tabloid cops. media. Yeah, all right. Uh, actors on drugs. I'll say uh, 86 with the critics and 82 with the people. I'm going to say 97, 91 because mm -hmm. I have not looked at this either. Mm hmm. So we'll reveal that. Wow, 99, 99 and 94. 94. That is real high. Now, that seems to me like, okay, that looks like it, with a 99 and a 94, that could possibly be the greatest movie of all time. Not there, many people would call that movie, oh, it's the greatest movie of all no, time. But, but you don't get a lot of hundreds. I mean, you're not, you're, you're collect, the highest you can get is 200, mm -hmm. and you're 195. Yeah. So, or sorry, 193. Three. Sorry. Wait a minute. Yeah. Did I screw that up? <laughs> yeah, six and uh, wait, well, yeah, 193. Sorry, yeah, six and one. Yeah, that's uh, about as high as you're going as you're going to get. Yeah, 